How's it going, everybody? This is Ramon from Bold Like a Leopard, and it's ACA Today. ACA Today is my new series dealing explicitly with Obamacare. That's right. Um, everything that I do from now on concerning Obamacare, it's the same as the Clinton Presidential Penitentiary Library. It's going to have a, you know, a different thumbnail and everything. Um, I think it's important enough for me. Uh, a lot of you might not care at all, and that's fine, but there's a lot of misinformation, disinformation going on right now about the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. Um, also on the side of people that are against it, too, there, there's one thing that I saw earlier that I could not confirm if the story is true or not, so I was about to do a video concerning use of federal money from the... Uh, Freddie Mae and Fannie Mac, the two big government mortgage lenders, uh, to fund Obamacare. Uh, it's gone back and forth. It's, it seems as if that's not a real story right now. So if I see something to the contrary, you know, I'll do a bit video on that. But right now, um, it looks like Ob you know Obamacare is being Ill illegally funded, not that way, but through appropriations that are not done properly from Congress. When you want money to pay for a federal program, you have to get congressional approval and funding. You have to, you have to get the funding approved by Congress. Um, that's the way it works in our three-branch system of government. Um, but we fortunately do have some confirmed real news uh, Obamacare is dying in Maryland too, and it isn't Trump's or Republicans' fault. Now, that headline might seem to you a little self-serving um, for many of these Republicans, but but um, I'll be honest with you, I don't like the Republican plan, but their plan has a number of improvements that are vastly ahead of Obamacare. The most important of which is there is no individual mandate. Um, but there's other issues. It says Obamacare had a very rough week last week with all insurers abandoning most of Iowa and another dropping out of the program in Virginia. But I missed the report from last week on the death spiral that insurance insurers are worried about in Maryland. Republican staffers on Capitol Hill, as it happens, did not miss it. The largest insurer in, Mid in the Mid-Atlantic region, um, <coughs> Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield, has requested permission to raise its premiums by large double-digit percentages, and their CEO had some words with the Washington Post's Wonk blog that demonstrate this is due to the blah's features, not the bugs related to Republicans potentially changing it. And it quotes, Protect, Projecting that by this year's end, the company will have lost a total of $600 million since it started selling plans in the marketplaces four years ago, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield is requesting a greater than 50% rate increase in Maryland, a 35% increase in Northern Virginia, and a 29% increase in D.C. So I'm going to give a little input on that in a second. He continues, what we're seeing is greater sickness levels. The pool of beneficiaries is becoming sicker, in part because healthier people are not coming in at the same level we hoped, said Chet Burrell, chief executive of Care First which ensures about 215,000 people through the marketplaces set up by the Affordable Care Act in all three states. So uh, let's delve into this for a second. Um, <coughs> Maryland does have Obamacare coverage, but if this rate increase is approved, uh, that would make, for example, a policy for a given person, you know, I'm saying hypothetically, a person who had started 2018, next year, um, if, if he continues in Obamacare, if his previous premiums had been uh, in, the, in the area of, <coughs> let's say, $320, a 50% increase would make it $480 per month. Okay, that's, it's, it's a real simple issue here. Uh, and that's just in Maryland. Now, in Northern Virginia, and by the way, Virginia, if you look at the map, um, that I will, well, I'll have to show the map in a different page, but um, let me flip to it. 
Okay, I'm here at the fake New York Times. And I'm calling it the fake New York Times. It has nothing to do with, with uh, well, it has something to do with Trump, but it has more to do with the fact that they lie about Obamacare, which is really what I care about. They can lie all they want about Trump. But look at this map. There's areas of Virginia that will have no insurance whatsoever. Those are the ones in purple. So you see my cursor here and down there. And that's the bottom half of the Chesapeake Peninsula or whatever you call it. Um, those will have no coverage in, 20, in 2018. The area in yellow in Tennessee also will have no coverage. The area in purple in Georgia will have no coverage. The area in purple in Colorado will have no coverage. But let's, go, let's focus on Virginia. So these areas in northern Virginia will have a 29% premium increase in 2018. Okay, so let's go back to the story. Um, th sorry, 35% increase in Northern Virginia and a 29% increase in D.C. Now, let's put that into perspective. <coughs> okay, Maryland, which has a, a very large poverty rate uh, in the Baltimore area, you're going to have a 50% rate increase. So who, who exactly can afford this shit insurance, okay? And I'm trying not to curse as much because this is sort of, the flagship right now of everything that I do, but it, it's impossible to really keep a straight face and de defend anything or make Obamacare seem rational anymore. It, it's almost eaten through every single um, standard of of of, uh, of functionality. That's that's what I'm trying to say. That when you have premiums increasing by 50% in Maryland, the state that that's not one of the richest in the country. And then 35% in Northern Virginia. Now, now, a lot of Northern Virginia is well off because it's closer to D.C. I think places like Fairfax and uh, obviously all those areas where the gov federal government is located. Uh, you know, Arlington. You know, that's expensive property there. That's, that's prime real estate. Um, but... You have to remember, too, the other zone was D.C., which has a 29% increase. D.C. has a very high pro poverty rates. So let's put this into perspective. Obamacare, a policy that <coughs> was meant to cover pre-existing conditions for patients of the middle class, is now being priced out of middle class uh, affordability and... For that matter, we're talking about states where the middle class is fragile in any case. There, there's very little um, <coughs> increase in, in manufacturing jobs in Virginia, certainly not in D.C. I, I actually read that D.C. has one of the worst um, non – one of the worst industrial uh, activity levels in the country. It's, there's almost no – industry in, in D.C. So if you're not working for the government, you may not even be working. That's for D.C. Um, and then the second paragraph, he says, what we're seeing is greater sickness levels. The pool of beneficiaries is becoming sicker, in part because healthier people are not coming in at the same level we hoped. Um, so let me make this clear. As long as these insurance plans are being mainly subscribed to by people that are filing claims and jacking up the premiums because they're being covered, the, the, you know, the, the, the more the insurance company has to shell out, the more they're going to bump up the price for everybody else. So this concern that um, risk pools, the, the, the more insure, the more hazardous insurance that the Republicans are proposing. The idea that that is a horrible initiative, um, look, that then Obamacare is the same thing. It's the same thing at this point because you're not seeing healthy people by Obamacare at all. So at this point, Obamacare is, it is a <coughs> risk pool, okay? Um, what's what's a advantage with the new... Um, the, the new, uh, what's it called? American Health Care Act, whatever you call it. The, the advantage, which I'd say is not 
what I would go for anyway, but it's still a leg up on the Affordable Care Act, is that you could have um, certain new configurations of plans that cover less, you know, cheap plans, discount plans. And, you know, in reality, what, what should they do? They should get rid of all of these regulations anyway. If people don't want to be covered for certain procedures, there is no reason to require them to be covered. It's it's um, uh, it's it's really overreaching the bounds of what the federal government is supposed to do. Okay, um, this article continues. This is in the Washington Examiner. So until now, they were quoting the Washington Post, but it says you might almost say that this, the exact same, the same exact thing causing all the recent market exits by insurers is exactly what Obamacare's opponents warned about. Because it is, unless you make little enough to be eligible for a large subsidy, but too much for Medicaid or get insurance through work, your monthly premium on the individual market may soon resemble a rent payment in a lower co cost part of America on the order of $350 to $700 per month, according to the Post. In 2013, before Obamacare, my individual market plan with a $2,700 deductible cost me $62 a month. So I'm not going to go and say that this guy is correct because you, you can't say that the insurance market would have stayed the same anyway. Healthcare costs have been going up. Obamacare is only part of the problem. And I, I've said that before. I hate Obamacare. I think it's one of the worst. It is the worst policy of my lifetime enacted by the federal government it's because it's just unsustainable. It is a lie from head to toe, uh, uh, virtually a, a Ponzi scheme that was perpetrated on the American public over eight years. I hate Obamacare, I, but I'm not plan claiming that Obamacare is the only problem. There's plenty of other issues with the way insurance companies behave at, uh, with regard to the consumer, with regards to <coughs> the way that doctors are, uh, you know, they have to pay for this malpractice insurance. Uh, that that has a, everything that you add to the cost of healthcare. Look, there's these um, there's a tax on medical devices that adds to the overhead cost. Everything that happens gets passed on to the consumer. Everything that prevents everything that comes in between scalpel and skin is a detriment to the healthcare consumer, the patient. Okay, and and people keep saying. Oh, why are you so callous? Why are you why are you talking about it in capitalistic terms? Isn't healthcare a human right? No, I don't believe it's a human right. My mom was a nurse for I believe 25 years. I'm not sure exactly because I don't remember when she started. I know she ended in something like 2002. She was not able to keep doing it. Uh, I don't believe that anybody who works in the medical professions is required to serve anybody. It's it's not a it's not a human right. Uh, Dr. Rand Paul said it very well. He said that nobody's entitled to to the fruit of his labor just because of who they are. And I agree with him because I saw these healthcare professionals are often investing 12-hour shifts. Uh, in in doctors' cases, 84-hour shifts. Or, yeah, it's 84-hour shifts. You cannot convince me, and I'm not a fan of doctors. I don't like going to doctors, but you cannot convince me that these guys are doing everything out of, the, out of greed, that they're these disgusting hedonists, and that's why they go into medicine. And I've, I've heard people say it to me, and honestly, I think that those people should maybe figure out their own way to heal other people because obviously – they're torn up inside themselves. Um, and this guy continues, and try as you might, you can't blame Care First's four-year, $600 million loss in Obamacare's exchanges on the current presidential administration. The Republican majority Congress that emerged after Obamacare passed and, and in the Senate took effect, took effect, nor on Maryland state government being insufficiently enthusiastic about implementing Obamacare. To address yet another commonly cited excuse, these rate increase requests were made on the assumption that Care First is going to be partially bailed out by federal taxpayers under Obamacare's Risk Corridor Program. Republicans have tried to prevent that bailout, but it remains a matter of controversy that still 
bouncing around in the courts. If not for the assumed bailout, or if the bailout doesn't come through, the requests for premium hikes could get even higher, Carefer CEO Chet Burrell told the Post. So these risk corridors, and it's becoming, you know, this is this is a term, I'll be honest with you, I had no, I didn't have any clue how this was connected to it. For me, risk corridors was kind of um, this new term that people are throwing out to deflect, and it is. Okay, because what risk corridors is really referring to is that once Obamacare exceeds its budget ceiling, the federal government, in effect, takes more money out of other funds and invests it in uh, bumping up the subsidy for Obamacare. So that they have a subsidy of only so much. Once the costs exceed that subsidy, they have to do these so-called risk corridors, which in reality, in Congressional term, terms, they're called CSRs or, yeah, CSRs, cost share reductions. And those are the, that's exactly what I've been saying. If you watch any of my other videos on Obamacare, okay, you will know that cost share reductions are payments that the Obama administration was taking from the Treasury illegally without congressional support, without congressional approval in order to bail out Obamacare. So they're illegal now. They need congressional approval. If the president does not get congressional approval, then they they don't count. Now, Democrats are now pressuring the Republicans to drop a lawsuit that they filed that they won. They won in a federal court. So they're pressuring them to drop a lawsuit that they won in federal court that calls these things illegal, they call, that, that calls these risk corridors illegal. Look, if you have, and I've said it in another video, if you have such a problem with the way that um, these uh, courts are dealing with Obamacare, then you should have a problem with the way they're, they're dealing with Trump's travel ban, which, by the way, I think is less of an issue than this. And I believe that Trump will win in at the Supreme Court. And if you, you feel that this is such a principled issue that, that you know, these risk corridors, this uh, bullshit, if you think it's such a problem that, that, and, and, and that uh, it needs to be defended, then let it go to the Supreme Court. Tell President Trump to keep suing the Congress to put this in the, in the Supreme Court. And you'll see that. In reality, <laughs> it's true. The president cannot take money of his own free will from the federal government, from the treasury, without congressional approval. Um, and that's basically that's basically the story of that. Um, so what does this guy finish? He says, the fact is Obamacare has a lot of serious structural flaws. It isn't working. President Obama won the debate on some aspects of what health insurance should look like, pre-existing conditions in particular, and as evidenced by the fact that there are many features of Obamacare that Republicans are merely reforming and not dismantling. But if the Republicans weren't overhauling this law right now, President Hillary Clinton would be doing it instead. She might even be considering some of the same fixes. There would ju be, just be a lot less hyperbole about her causing people to die. And <coughs> you know what? It's worth wondering what exactly Hillary Clinton was proposing to do because, because, understand this, uh, her husband called Obamacare the craziest thing in the world, Bill Clinton, a person who President Obama once called in to give a press conference in order to defend his, Obama's, tax cuts after the 2010 midterm elections, which he lost. He lost the House. So, you know, this this uh, notion that if Trump was not president, Obamacare would be fine is complete idiocy. It's idiocy of the, higher or, of the highest order. Um, it's structurally unsound. Uh, if Hillary Clinton was president, she would have to do something. Now, in order to, quote unquote, fix Obamacare, as these idiots say, it means exactly what they're talking about. These CSRs, cost share reductions, are basically the government overcommitting to Obamacare in the first place by subsidi and subsidizing insurance for people that are in a position where they <coughs> 
are not are not well um, well accommodated to pay for insurance. Okay, let's be honest. These people, uh, um, what the, what's a solution for them? The, their solution at this point in the system that we have would be Medicaid. Okay, it would be some sort of Medicaid for uh, a variety of conditions. Um, but the other solution would be more flexible uh, po health insurance policies with less requirements, you know, le less required coverages. Okay. So, so, so look, Obamacare is dying and the Democrats are in denial about it. And the Republicans won't go out there and tell the truth, the full truth that they allowed this monstrosity to occur and they, they didn't that what, what should have really happened was that progressives and conservatives should have gotten together and really really hammered obama over it but because neither side wanted to really criticize him and they all wanted to give him a chance and the republicans said you know we're not going to vote for it and whatever now that wasn't that was they needed the progressives to come out and say Look, um, this is bullshit. You're basically giving corporate welfare. We want single payer, is what they would say. Is what they would say, not me, not me. But um, they were not consistent enough. They felt insecure enough that they would be called racists. That they held their tongues, and and that's how we have what we have today. So, look, I blame a lot of progressives, not all of them. I think some progressives did call him out and say that he's full of shit and that they wanted single payer health care which is, you know, I think that's the principled position, even if I, it's wrong, um, in my opinion. Um, but a lot of these progressives pretty much uh, pussied out. Bernie Sanders, in fact, pussied out for a long time. He did, he did vote in favor of Obamacare, by the way. All those lies that Hillary Clinton spread about him. Uh, yes, he's correct. She did lie. He did vote for Obamacare, which means that he's an asshole. So anyway, this is Ramon. Um, bold like a leopard, and this is ACA today. So, if you live in a state where there's news about Obamacare that I haven't covered, send me, send me a link, or uh, contact me. You can, um, I, I will put the Twitter or the Facebook link below, and let me know because we have to keep this moving. We can't let the Democrats uh, just stonewall the popular will. Obamacare must die. It doesn't matter what happens um, with these Democrats and Republicans getting mad. You know, it does matter that the Democrats don't win control of Congress. It's, but, you know, the Republicans keeping control, as we've seen, almost means nothing. So what really matters is that we put their feet to the fire and then maybe finally at some point we can start talking about you know, reforming all of our other policies relating to healthcare. So this, that's it. This is Ramon. This is Bold Like a Leopard. ACA Today. Tune in, listen up, and fuck off.